everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I'm Yuni and I love making art in my own style. On my channel I show you the complete process of creating my drawings and paintings, talk about art supplies and share inspiration, advice and tips with you. If you love art like I do and want to have a good time creating together with me, subscribe to my channel and leave a like under this video, thank you! In today's video I'm so excited to share something new with you all. For the first time I'm going to be painting my own sketchbook cover. I absolutely love decorating my sketchbooks, but this time I've decided to do it in a different way. I usually use stickers, washi tapes and deco papers to add a bit of sparkle. However, later on I started making more intricate covers inspired by the K-pop aesthetic and if you've been following my channel, you've probably seen one of my sketchbooks with a cover inspired by the lovely Gaion from Dreamcatcher and this is pretty much what my current collection looks like. Do you decorate your sketchbooks? I would love to hear from you about how you decorate your sketchbooks if you are willing to share. I will leave a comment below this video for you to reply to, so feel free to join the conversation! As you know, I don't like boredom at all, so it was time for something new. I thought, why not try my hand at gouache painting on the cover? I've been a fan of this traditional medium for quite some time. In addition, I love seeing all the beautiful covers that the other artists have created, so why not give it a go? Even if I remember correctly, the same sketchbook was once bought by my lovely friend Kiki and she probably recorded a similar video on her channel where she painted on its cover with gouaches too, but I think she used water-based gouaches, which aren't so opaque. I'm not going to lie, I bought this sketchbook in my favorite discount shop action, which is slowly popping up all over Europe and it's been around in my country and my hometown for a while now. If you are from Europe, you are probably already familiar with this shop. If you haven't been yet, you are definitely going to love it. I'm pretty sure we all live with bags full of purchases. Let me know if you have the same experience as me with this shop. <laughs> really, I just love this shop. You can really find a great range of art supplies there. I remember going to Kiki's exhibition at her university. It was the first time we'd seen each other and it was then that I told her to check out this amazing shop that offers art supplies so cheaply. I know it's a bit hit and miss, but there are still lots of great cheap art supplies like alcohol markers or their sketchbooks. You can see on Kiki's channel in one of her videos how she was so taken with this shop that she fell in love with it and then forfeited. I know it's all my fault Kiki, I'm so sorry and sorry to your money too which just disappeared after you got into this shop. I think I paid around $4 for the sketchbook. It's bound in hard cardboard which makes it easy to use and gives your paintings great adhesion. I am a big fan of square sketchbooks but I don't know why I don't have that many in my collection. Its dimensions are 21 cm by 21 cm which I think are just perfect. It's neither too big nor too small which is great. It has 30 sheets of thick 300 GSM watercolor paper, which is really nice. I've noticed that some sheets are more textured than others. I haven't really had a chance to test this paper for what kind of medium it works best with, but I will probably just use it for gouache and acrylic techniques. A long time ago, I started to paint a shot of a scene from Naruto in it with acrylics, but I haven't finished it yet, so I won't show it to you for now. Let me just finish that first. 
Acrylic gouaches, acrylics or similar media are probably the best choice for painting something on this type of sketchbook due to the fact that they are strongly opaque to paints and the color of the cover doesn't make it easy to work with and you need really good coverage. Even though Holbein acrylic gouaches fulfill this condition, I still had to apply at least two layers of paint so that it covered the cardboard completely and nothing showed through. You don't even know how enjoyable it was for me to create this cover. I thought the feeling would be similar to painting on wood, but it was completely different. When I am painting on wood, the color often differs from the actual color when applying the first layer, plus the wood absorbs too much paint and water. The light reflects differently on such a wet surface, so often the colors are distorted at the very beginning and I even have trouble blending something well and I have to be very careful with the amount of water in order not to overdo it, you know. The paint stuck really well to the sketchbook cover, even though the cover was much darker than the wood, the coverage was much better on the cardboard. This is probably why, with this painting, I had trouble calculating the right amount of paint that I could pour onto the palette and that nothing would be wasted. I don't usually have a problem with this, but as I said, wood absorbs a lot more paint and here it was quite the opposite. I'm sure you can imagine how much it hurt me to see all that paint go to waste. I'd calculated too much of it, so now I will remember for next time that I don't need as much paint for this type of surface as I do when painting on wood. I wish I could change the lighting in my room. It's so hard to get the perfect light in here. There's hardly any natural light coming in because my room still has that built-in balcony. On top of that, the sun changes the light a lot in the afternoon. Despite the blinds and curtains being drawn, you can still see the color of the sunlight going crazy in the videos. I spent so much time editing and processing the color to make the shots uniform, but I've still not found the perfect way to make them all look the same. It's such a challenge. And ha, uh, summer, the season of sunshine and warmth, but also the time when I can only shoot until noon. Why? At midday in summer, the sun starts to shine too much in my room. I have the secret dream of having two softboxes, but the biggest problem for now is that I don't have enough space in my room. In the future, I would simply love to have my own separate large studio where I can organize everything the way I want. That's what I'm aiming for. Time for a little life update. Firstly, I invested in a year's subscription to video editing software. I found that I wanted to make it easier and faster for myself to work on videos, especially as it has become a huge part of my life. It's always been a dream of mine to work like this and have my own YouTube channel where I can share my passion with others. I've been watching creators on this platform since I was very young and I've always dreamed of being a real YouTuber. I grew up on this platform first as a viewer, then already as a small creator who tried many things and discovered herself. I've never been very confident in myself, I always felt like I wasn't as good as others and I was constantly worrying about being inferior. I was so afraid to speak up, to create, to face people's comments that at some point I just let it go. I viewed the YouTube platform as just something I enjoyed in my free time, but nothing more. I felt so much more confident writing a blog, that was my chance to be totally anonymous, 
Nobody at school knew about my blog, but during that time I met so many lovely people who I am still in touch with even after 15 years. We were all totally hooked by a cartoon about fairies and we are talking about the Winx Club. I'm so grateful to my older friends who also run blogs about fairies, thanks to which we got to know each other. They were so generous with their time and helped me learn how to use Photoshop from scratch. They also helped me create graphics for my blog. At first it was just simple templates and layouts. I learned how to use textures, actions and even create them myself. And they even taught me how to make animations. Thanks to them, I found out about DeviantArt and started to publish my Wings Universe character drawings there. These drawings were created with my PC mouse in Paint.net, can you believe it? At that point, I already felt that the internet and contributing to it was going to be my whole life. I've been sharing my art on various platforms for years now. I started out on DeviantArt, then moved on to some driving forums, Twitter and finally Instagram along with TikTok. It just didn't quite do it for me. Despite all the new followers I was getting, I felt like I was standing still. I was so happy to see my skills getting better and better, but I still didn't feel like I was making any real progress. And now I am here. A few months ago I invested in a PC to use for editing videos and creating art. It wasn't long before I started my new YouTube channel. It was a slow process, I was still learning all this stuff. I just wanted to get into a regular routine. I've had so many messages from people who say that YouTube is the best platform for artists and I totally agree. First of all, I can speak to you here. I can tell you about myself, what I'm doing and I can show you the whole creative process. That way we can create a deep connection and relationship with all of you lovely people. I just feel like I can be myself here and talk to you as if you were my friends. I'm really happy that you are so open to sharing your thoughts and ideas with me in the comments. I'm so grateful for your engagement, it truly means a lot to me and shows me that you really enjoy spending time with me and watching my videos, which I put so much heart into. I'm so grateful to you and YouTube for giving me this amazing opportunity to make my dreams come true. When I was posting on Instagram, I had this dream of working with some amazing Polish art brands. I finally got the nerve to write to about 5 of the companies. None of them replied to me. <laughs> I was so disappointed, I didn't know if what I was doing was the right path or if I could make it as a full-time artist and art content creator. I went to usual job, which after just a month and a day I left behind. And just a day later I got an email from Artex with an amazing offer, a collaboration. I was over the moon because it was my first collaboration that I had always dreamed of and that I didn't have to beg for. Another month went by and I was thrilled to get another collaboration with Ohuhu and Lightwish. On top of that, the lovely Lenny from Artex offered me yet another set of acrylic markers to test out. This is just the beginning of my adventure, but I feel incredibly grateful and have never been so happy and fulfilled. I promise I will give you all more of me. I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who's been so supportive. Without you, it would be really tough to make my artistic dreams come true. Getting back to the cover painting, I used a little glossy varnish from Liquitex to protect the whole cover. I was really worried about this, especially because I used water-based gouache for the line art. 
I was afraid that I would accidentally spill water on it or touch it with something wet and all the paint would smudge. I've been using spray varnish, but I think I would like to test some other alternative. I found that the spray varnish doesn't spread evenly and it also makes a lot of stains. I would love to hear if you know of any good alternatives. If you do, please let me know in the comments. I simply couldn't resist using those George's 3D cherry blossom stickers I got from Henry from Instagram. My new OC has two of these lovely decorative flowers on her beret. It was the perfect excuse to use these stickers and I'm really pleased with how they look on the cover. I hope you like this idea. Let me know what you think. When you get to the end of this video, you will still be able to enjoy a few little glimpses of the creation of the sweet little cherry blossom illustration that adorns the back cover. But luck for me, I had already applied the paints and a while later the camera decided to let me know that there was not enough space on the memory card. As I didn't have a spare at hand, I had to start transferring the files to my computer. I hope you are not too disappointed. Here you can see just a small part of the whole process and then the end result. Honestly, I really like it. It adds such an amazing touch. And this is what it looks like in the end. I would love to hear from you in the comments if you like it and if you would like to create your sketchbook cover like this one day. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and leave a like under this video. See you soon, bye!